parents, my name is Mrs. Hildreth and I am one of the middle school counselors for both middle school East and West. I am also one of the three department heads of the school counselors throughout the building. I put together today's presentation to help you as you are supporting students during the COVID global crisis. Before I get into the exact topics of today, I wanted to share this visual with you. Whenever we see our students, we see just the top of the iceberg. We only see them say things like, I'm okay. Sometimes we might see students who are normally kind of calm start to overreact in anger, or we might see students cry for no reason. We might just see the top of what's really going on. Especially our younger students have a difficult time expressing what's really going on in their life. So their iceberg is actually very small at the top. You can see all of the things that they might be going through underneath. And this is just a touch, this is just touching on what they might be going through. So they may have shut down emotionally and can't process. They might be trying to keep it together and not fall apart. So they might be trying to fake how they're feeling. They might see that you're going through a lot and don't want to burden you with their problems. They just might be having difficulty finding joy and finding the happiness of any given moment or the bright side of life. They might not feel comfortable, uh, safe or comfortable self-disclosing at that moment. So it's not you, it's just at that moment they don't feel safe self-disclosing. They also might just notice things are off and are not feeling themselves. So there's a lot of different reasons why we, why they might be feeling kind of off settled when at the top, you might just see different behaviors. So keep that in mind as you're working with your students. So today I want to talk about the mental health perspective. Why is it we see so many students and so many people in general having difficulties as they're going through life right now. And you might have questions such as who is this kid. Why is my student so emotionally unstable when they typically aren't? I'm also going to discuss several coping mechanisms for you and for your child as we're going through this difficult time. Right now we are going through a world crisis with this pandemic and we've noticed as we go through different uh, world crisis is that we might have more difficulties mental health wise than we did in the past. So large scale traumas such as World Trade Center attacks, mass shootings, hurricanes or environmental disasters are almost always accompanied by increases in depression, post traumatic stress disorder, substance use disorder, other mental health and behavior disorders, domestic violence and child abuse, and suicide. So all of these factors have been shown to increase. So the biological reason why has to do with different hormones released in our body. Whenever we are alerted to stress, the hypothalamus is alerted. That is the brain's alarm system. When activated, it releases a surge of hormones such as cortisone and adrenaline. Once the perceived threat has passed, hormone, normals, uh, hormone levels return to normal heart rate and blood pressure return to a baseline. However, right now, stressors are always present. So the fight flight reaction stays turned on and the hormones continue. When we have this overexposure to stress and long-term hormone concerns, it often turns into different um, symptoms that we might see mental health wise, such as anxiety, depression, digestive problems, headaches, heart disease, sleep problems, weight gain, and in schools we see memory and concentration impairment. So all of these factors relate to the idea that we have serious mental health concerns possibly brewing. <music> Greetings are very different for students. We all miss high fives, hugs, fist bumps, whatever other ways of touching that students are used to. Students are encouraged now to wave to other students in school or smile through their mask. 
it can feel difficult for the students to feel connected to others whenever we are six feet apart. But remember, physical distancing is a sign of respect. Review that with your students. We can still show others that we are connected by showing compassion and demonstrating kindness. We can send upbeat text, Snapchat, or, or a note to someone. We can smile and wave. We can say hello. Ask how someone is doing and really listening to their answer. So remind students, though greetings are different, we still have ways to connect with other people. You also are aware that health guidelines are different for our students too. They are required to wear a mask. They are, there's more emphasis on washing their hands. Also, students have to be aware and monitor themselves for signs of illness. Schools are also very different for our students, especially as we're returning to the hybrid model whenever they're in schools themselves. Bathroom procedures are very different for our students. Lunches are very different in that they may or may not be able to sit near friends. And even when they're sitting near their friends, they're spaced so far apart that everybody else around them can hear. There are also fewer desks and students in each classroom. They're not as able to talk to their friends even in passing in and in the halls. Hallways also are divided by going one direction and then the other. I'm sure we've all felt the idea that so many activities and events have also been canceled or altered as well. So that's another thing that our students are going through right now. They might have had to find new activities or new ways to do their old activities. They might not be seeing relatives or friends as often as what they were before because of, of worries about the virus. Since you're working through the trauma of you and your student, I thought it'd be great to point out some hope coping mechanisms. So now I'm going to review a lot of coping mechanisms that you can use to help your child. But I also want you to know that these are good coping mechanisms for you to use as an adult. Practice good self care. You can't help others if you can't take care of yourself. And always remember kids model how you react to events. If you are calm, they are calm. If you find ways to cope, they will find ways to cope as they go through this situation. It's a good idea to kind of define self-care with our students and with our kids. Self-care means to take an active role in caring for your own well-being, especially in times of stress or change. It's important to practice self-care while socially distancing because things can feel like they're out of control. There are lots of activities that can be related to self-care. Exercising, getting enough sleep, eating healthy, spending time with your family, drinking more water, and lots more ideas. So whenever your student, when your kids are very stressed or anxious, it's good for them to have a self-care toolkit or ideas about what they can do whenever they're really stressed so they can go to that activity. Help them find a comfortable spot where they feel like they are at home and where they can feel like they are relaxed. Sometimes students like to have soothing objects in their hands so they can fiddle with or to work to hold as they're stressing. Listening to music. Many students are calmed by music of different sorts. Journaling, writing out their problems in a journal. Playing different games, either with others or on their own. Coloring or doing art. There are several apps out there that can help you out as far as finding ways that students can color on the computer as well as in, in real life. Sports. They could practice whatever sport they are interested in. And also instruments and singing. Meditate and practice relaxation techniques. Meditation is a great way to build self-awareness and manage stress. Find a quiet place to take deep breaths and relax. We have a relaxing room through PV that you might be interested in that has many meditation techniques. Go to bit.ly backslash PV relaxing room. Finally, for another self-care technique, set realistic goals for yourself. Set long and short-term goals for yourself and place them in an area that you can see them every day. 
Another self-care technique is getting support from relationships. Have support in relationships at home and, a, and at school. And also virtually you may have many supportive relationships. These supportive relationships will help you to boost your mental health. Finally, don't be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes we can feel overwhelmed or we might need something and be afraid to ask for help. I'm hoping that you've gathered some ways that you can help yourself and help your students as they're going through this difficult time through the pandemic. Again, I'm hoping that you found why our students are acting this way, why there's such a concern with mental health, and also then some coping techniques that you can use. I'm hoping to put together a couple other videos to help you out as we're going through this difficult transition. And please reach out to your counselors or to anybody else in the school if you feel like you may need some help to support your student through this difficult time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.